and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. <laughs> Hi folks, I'm Bob Schoep, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Because we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. Hey Brad, we got quite a treat going on here. This, uh, this we, is exciting, we Bob. We have some guests, and they actually know what they're talking about as opposed to us. So. Yeah, yeah, it's, it is exciting because it's... Uh, we have know. experts. Right, yeah. So we're going to show how, gonna today to demonstrate how to put on and take off a, an above-knee prosthesis. Don and Doff, as they will say, right? Right. So above the knee, which this is great because I actually have I, mostly below the knee is my experience. Sure. By the way, if you're new to our channel, please take a second to subscribe to us. We provide videos how to stay healthy, fit, pain-free, and we upload every day. Also, go to bobandbrad.com. Go to the giveaway section. We're really giving away a sweet gift today. What is uh, it? The, the mattress. Oh, we're doing the mattress. Yeah, yeah, Excellent. Sleep -a mattress. It is a nice mattress. Yeah, go to Facebook. Uh, it will be pinned to the top of the page of the contest. Go to Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok if you want a 60-second version of our program. And, Brad? We have the podcast now, right. and we've got some excellent interviews going on. So... The expert we have today, as far as the prost prostatist, right slash orthotist, <laughs> yeah, it's well, a hard. Why don't they? Got to be very yeah, careful. Yeah. We need our speech therapist. Yeah. So um, he's from Lim Lab, and they have. He's, I'm going to have him mention all the locations where they're at because, and it's also National Prosthetic Month. Na and National it, Amputee Awareness, Awareness Month. Yes. Limb Loss Awareness Month. Okay. okay. We're getting it right. Yes. So. All right. Let's, uh, we'll bring our guests in. Good. Randy's going to be our oh, star. Oh, yeah. Right. Star. Randy's yeah. the star. Yeah. And we want to say hi to his daughter. Evidently, we've, we've helped her with some All right. stretching. So it's wonderful. All right. We don't okay. know her name, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here we are. We're going to talk about how to don and off or put on and take off a prosthesis, artificial right. limb. And Brandon is here. Brandon, you are a... I'm a co-founder of Limb Lab and a certified prosthetist. So Limb Lab is the company that provides all these and provides a service to... You sell them, you put yeah, them Yeah, we you... do it. We do it all. We okay. custom design artificial limbs and, and braces. Okay. So prosthetics and orthotics. I know he had a little problem pronouncing prosthetics yes. or prosthetist. You're doing really good. Uh-huh. Yeah. I, so when I go to kindergarten classes, I uh, I usually try to, you know, take them through it by the syllable. So it's prosthetist. Yes. Can you say that? Yes. Okay. Great. <laughs> so we're going to work on uh, how to put things on and off. Yep. And we have a really special guest today. So I'm excited we got a this. guy that is coming to us from Michigan. Mm -hmm. He travels to our Rochester location. Well, Lim Lab, we've been around for seven years. Okay. And we have seven or six locations, I think. Okay. Uh, one in Rochester, Minnesota. Right. One in Mankato, Minnesota, okay. one in Minneapolis, Minnesota, one in La Crosse, Wisconsin. I'm so familiar with that Not one. too far from yeah. here. One in Lincoln, Nebraska. Oh. And we just opened one in Scottsdale, Arizona. Okay. All right. Yeah. Good. So, so Randy, Randy from Michigan is going to come onto the set right now, and we're going to show everyone how he takes come off on in, Randy. his prosthesis. Hey, yeah. hey Randy. This is, a, this is a real pleasure. Good to uh, see you, man. Randy, we appreciate Hello. you coming in. And you have an above-knee amputation on the right leg, obviously. I haven't worked with an above. Actually, I have, but not. I didn't carry it through because a person had to leave for other reasons. So this is going to be great well, for Well, we're, we're special. Above knees are special. Yeah. Just so you know that. It is a different... Mm -hmm. Uh, approach as opposed it's more difficult isn't it as far it as is the, you know when you don't have you know so above the knee it's an amputation through the femur somewhere mm -hmm. and when we don't have the original equipment you know that we were born with with a knee yeah. or the ankle and the foot it, it gets more and more complicated the, the higher up you go right um so it, randy and, and that's true for donning and doffing taking it on and off it it's, is it's more difficult more things it to is. pay okay. attention no? to okay. you know uh could you stand up and just take sure. your pants off for us Okay. Oh yeah, watch out for that. We've <laughs> don't worry, we're we're covered here. This is a family show. Everything is on the up and up. We've discussed it. There we go. Oh yeah, camouflage. Oh, How's that? That's oh, beautiful. You are a hunter. I am. So yeah, well you've got to have camouflage undies in. Yep. That's right. <laughs> That's All right. Let's kick these off. So as a prosthetist, we're really used to helping people get their pants off, uh, their shoes off the prosthesis. We're used to helping them and teaching them how to put the things on from the very beginning. 
So it's not uncommon for me to meet a client, an amputee, immediately after surgery or before surgery. That's and, when we met, yeah, right after surgery. And kind of you know, inspire them or educate them or be there to kind of explain to them what to expect. Yeah. Uh, you know, no one really recognizes all the things that are going through a person's mind when they're faced with an amputation sure. or a limb loss surgery, you know? So it's a, it's a big role that we play, not only... It's more mental mechanical, than it is physical. Right. right. And, uh, you know, you think about all those things, like, what should I have done in life? You know, what have sure. I done in life? Yeah. You know, and you, you weigh all those things, and now what am I going to do? What sure. are my goals going to be? Right. Really and, important and, to set goals. And just the loss of the limb itself is very traumatic psychologically. Something that right. you really can't prepare for, I'm assuming. Yeah. I don't think you can. <laughs> no, sure. Uh, so you've been through it. And as far as just the donning and doffing, yeah. uh, where do we start with that? Well, let's take you through it. So, Randy, if you could stand up. I'm just going to explain really quickly to everybody what is going on here. So we have an above-the-knee amputation. We have an above-the-knee prosthetic socket. And this one might look different than yours at home or your friends or your your uh, your parents or whatever. But this type of socket is called a hi-fi socket. It's developed by a guy out of San Francisco, and, and we at LimLab are licensed to provide this type sure. of socket. It's, it's incredible. It is incredible. It, uh, it, it uses this concept of osseosynchronization. I know these are a lot of big words yeah, yeah, today I'm throwing could around Could you dumb here. that up for me? It, yeah, so it, it's uh, four panels that squeeze the tissue around the femur bone to control rotation and float the limb within all of these struts and let the tissue kind of pooch out the side. Okay. And oh, so what that does... That so, feels good. So, so that's, that's, your, <laughs> that's your tissue. That's your skin yes. right underneath yeah. this... Yep, flesh. Yep. And so how this is held on is a silicone liner rolled onto Ooh, his limb, yep. a lanyard suspension strap down to a microprocessor knee. This one here... Is state of the art. It's an X3 knee by a company called Autobach out of mm -hmm. Germany, and uh, it's waterproof. He can go up and down the Grand Canyon. You'll get to that later. Uh, he can go in water. He can go in oh. mud and weeds, all sorts of things, and then down to a multi-axial uh, dynamic response prosthetic foot. So why don't you show him how you take that off, Randy? We just undo the strap. Hold on to something so you don't fall down. And have a seat. And that's it. So just up close, here's what that thing looks like. Good. And when we're educating people on how to put these things on, something that is common across no matter what type of limb that you wear, uh, whether it's a silicone liner that you roll onto your arm, a silicone liner that you roll onto your leg above the knee, or a silicone liner that you roll onto your limb below the knee, you always pay attention to a few things. So, Rand, if you can roll that off for me. <clears throat> the way that this thing is held on is by the skin tension. So when the silicone liner rolls onto a person's limb, it rolls on and it's literally stuck to their skin. And that is the suspension on how it they walk with it, how it connects to mechanical suspension to the prosthetic itself. It keeps your leg from itself. falling off, Brandon. It does. Which kind of, is kind it's of It's not important. good to have your leg fall <laughs> no, off. <it's> not. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you ever have that happen? Oh, all the time. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mostly when I'm under my truck working on it, my toe will catch on something, and bloop, my leg oh pops my off, and I go, well, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> so this... Does that form a suction? It kind does. Of? Okay. It does. All right. And so because it forms a suction, it's really important that you reflect it all the way down. We're going to go over kind of cleaning and care later, but mm -hmm. we're just right now going to show people how to put this thing on. So when you completely reflect it, there's a little bit of a dip here, and that needs to be flat against a person's skin. You need to pay attention what side goes in the middle and what side goes on the outside. Mm -hmm. The low side in the middle. Right. Yep. And then uh, you flatly place this against his limb. And so, Randy, if you kind of explain how you roll that thing on. Normally how I do this, I lean against something. Hold that for me. Got it. You can hold my arm if you need to. 
and you need to make it vertical, and then you roll it on with pressure. Oh. You make it look pretty easy. And just like that. And so there's no space between his limb and the end of the silicone liner. That's very important. No matter what type of liner and what type of prosthesis you use, make sure that's always contacted so there. There's no air pocket. No so air pocket. Okay. Then this thing can do its job. It's stuck on him. We could pull him all around on sure. this thing. <laughs> ah. So, do you ever have skin problem, breakdown, or sweatiness? Or I do. Like when okay. I do dumb stuff. <laughs> which I do most every day. Yeah. Um, you can get water blisters. You Ooh. can get uh, um, if you if the sometimes when you're really working out, mm -hmm. your limb will sweat. Yes. And if it sweats, then this can pull down a little ways. And if it pulls a little bit away, it messes up with the connection to the prosthetic okay. limb. And then you can get hot spots. Mm. Uh, so if you look down in the bottom of this thing, there's a slot for this strap to go through. Yep. You see that? All the way down oh, the sure. bottom. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then a little hole for this yep. bolt to sit in. Yep. So Randy's going to fish that through the bottom. He's done this a few times. He'll make it look kind of easy. You know, sometimes it, look at that, right to the bottom. And he's going to draw his tissue and his limb down inside this sure. chamber yep. to get a perfect kind of contact. And he takes a good amount of time and ensures that his tissue is being drug into the socket all the way nope. to have good distal contact. You can see he's a pretty fit guy. Yeah. Uh, if you have someone that is not so strong, is this a pretty big challenge? Or? It is, but, but we custom design prostheses and sockets depending on each per person's actual needs okay. Okay? and their ability. Mm -hmm. So that's part of our job to, if they can handle it, we make a socket that requires a physical ability to put it on right. and it yields, you know, more active results for someone who's weaker and their goals maybe aren't climbing the Grand Canyon or hunting 80 days a year. <laughs> we make the prosthesis suit their needs. It so doesn't need to on as tight because they're not stressing it as much. Right. Sure. Okay. But all the, 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 still the, the properties, you know, the fundamental things, the, the silicone liner against your skin, important no matter how hard it is to put on and off sure the sure. total contact mm -hmm. of the limb inside the socket all the way down to the bottom important no matter how hard it is to put it sure. on and off. Yep. Okay. and once it's on randy can feel that everything's in place you know he's got good contact on this butt bone the ischial tuberosity yep, we cut the sit bone the sit bone yeah. yep mm -hmm. yep and that's really where most of the weight in this prosthesis sure, is, is taken sure. yeah. in traditional above the knee prosthetic I mean, we sockets. Show it on Sam, I don't know if that yeah. would be helpful. Yeah, sure. Bring him over. Maybe we can dance. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, Sam's a little well, uncoordinated. So right seat. here, the ischial tuberosity, right. that's your sit bone. Yep. And that is what is a stopping point in an above the knee socket. It literally is like he's standing on this or sitting on this as he walks. So you can clearly feel that, I'm assuming. Yes. Yep. Okay. Oh, yep. yeah. He has to because yeah. the end of his limb, it's a cut bone with just muscle tissue on the end. Right. Is not made for weight bearing. Okay. There's been a couple times that's happened. Yes. Where I put too much weight on that end of that oh, femur. Does it? It wants to come out the bottom of your skin. Oh, yeah. Not good. Yeah. No, so we do lots of things to prevent that. Mm -hmm. We squeeze him in these four quadrants. We hold him at the ischial tuberosity. So the whole prosthesis is really, his limb is supported on his ischial tuberosity right. and a combination of pressure on the four quadrants of this hi-fi socket sure. concept. So kind of spread out yeah, and we equally lift and a lot of it And we keep ish. him off the bottom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're trying to capture like a cup of jello. <laughs> with a popsicle stick in it and everything i do is my popsicle stick is my femur sure right and you got all that flesh around it yeah so try and do work with that yeah that's what we do every day you know let's just take maybe a couple steps forward backward here to show people how it yeah yep so we're looking at you, you have these you know your, your underwear these tight fitted like spandex underwear is right. that and then you have that in there is that a problem ever where you have too many layers or a certain kind of material is so needed? more active people if you take your leg off again 
take your prosthesis off. So Randy has, uh, everybody has different sensitivity of skin. Randy found that his active type of wear and tear on this prosthetic brim would cause some, you know, irritation sure. in, the, in, the, in the tender skin up yep. in the uh, groin area. So what he does to solve that problem is a really clever idea. Yep. Why don't you tell him about it? Well, what I found was I was getting ingrown hairs where these contact points are. Sure. Right? Yeah. If I sat too long or if I did too much work or whatever, I had to protect my skin from wear points. Yep. And so I thought, what what can I do? You know, and there was a lot of, there were suggestions of using a lotion or a powder or whatever. And it seemed like I was just, that didn't make sense to me. And so I came across the idea of using uh, these Under Armors. Mm -hmm. uh they're slippery yeah yep and i just cut it cut one leg off yep to the right length and this allows my prosthetic to slide sure, sure. over the underwear right. so it's, it's sliding, not, not sliding on the material not your skin that's right sure yep so the, it's sense. a barrier between my yeah, skin and good, the prosthetic good thinking yeah so maybe just put it on one more time show everybody how you do it talk them through what you're doing I grab the the strap and feed it through this hole in the bottom. See it coming out there. And then as I pull it on, I relax the muscles in this limb so that it slides on easier. And I'd leverage my hands against the socket to make sure that I get it to go home. Because <laughs> it has to be at the bottom. If it's not at the bottom, you're gonna have big problems. Things will like piston or side up and down. It'll and piston up and down. Skin it could even it cause blisters. Give yeah. you uh, hot spots, water blisters, yeah. those types yeah. of things. And uh, you have to be very aware of what that skin's doing all day long. As soon as you feel a hot spot, it's just like a pair of brand new hiking boots, right? Sure. This, you, how do you break this in? You don't. It's fixed. Sure. So you have to be careful with your skin. And you actually break your limb in. Every time I get a socket from Brandon, it's like, oh boy. And then Start. what happens is my limb will season to the socket. I see. Somewhat. So. And so when you stand up, uh, the other thing that you just do naturally is you make sure the obvious is true, that your foot and knee are pointed in the direction you actually want them to be when you slide <laughs> yeah. it on your limb, right? That's right. another important thing. You don't want it pointing off to the side or in or out. You just want it to be straight in line, goes to the place that it was made, and once you're in it, you can just walk. Yeah, and if you want to go north, your leg has to be going north. <laughs> sure. I mean, you say that, it makes sense, but I'm assuming when you're learning those things, sometimes right. you're overwhelmed with everything that's going on. And so that's kind of the biggest challenge being a prosthetist is, you know, you work with, you know, many, many people over the years and you become uh, part of their, you know, extended family, so to speak. Sure. And you, you're their mechanic, you know, yeah. and, and when it's somebody's yeah. first time, you have to explain things a totally different way sure. so that because it's their first time going through this, yeah. even though a guy like Randy's done it a hundred times, sure. you know, it's, yeah. it's a very challenging and, and fun kind of uh, experience. And so, it's, it's scary getting a prosthetic leg, especially oh, the first time. Yeah, It's not like your real leg, you know, you learn to right, walk when you right. don't remember, right? When you're yeah, one year old. Yeah. Cause if you're, th if you know, we're aware there's a therapist, everyone here, but you know, you cannot, feel your foot because it's not there you may have some phantom sensation which which means that you your mind is feeling the foot that's not there and that can be a frustrating thing but all that yeah. in combination uh, you know it takes months to develop a comfortable it's, gait it's reprogramming your brain right. right right you have to learn to walk again yep. and it's scary yeah well yeah, and obviously it's uh, you've gone through it. So do you have before we get? I've got one more comment, but I want to say as far as how long did it take you to get proficient with this, where you could do it by yourself? Was it weeks, months? No, it it, it it's a long process. Um, when I first got my uh, leg amputated, I met with Brandon and I got a post-operative prosthetic, which is more mental than physical. I mean, you just lost a leg. Now, hey. Now what do I do? Well, they give you a leg and it's and it works, 
It's but you like don't do much with it. It's a temporary one? It's a temporary okay. one because your limb is swelled and surgery mm -hmm. and it's got to heal and all those things. And this could um, be as soon as one or two or three days after your uh, actual surgery. It was. Yeah. I think it was three days. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, 12 years ago. It was about three days you came walking into my room. But, <laughs> um, but then I went back to Michigan and I looked for a prosthetic place back in Michigan that would do my work for me. And it took about a year and a half. And now I drive to Lim Lab in Rochester, Minnesota, um, you know, to be kind. So um, how long did it take me to get proficient at putting this on? Uh, as soon as you get a good socket, uh, it, it's pretty quick. Okay. Um, sometimes you don't do it so well. Sometimes I have to put it on two or three times in the morning. Not so often, but every once in a while I'll go, oh, I didn't roll my liner on correctly. Or, sure, sure. or you know, it's it's... A little bit northwest and it should be north so uh i'll have to put it on a second time sure uh and then there's times during the day when i just do too many dumb stuff and just you know i'm working on my car or whatever sure and i go oh i gotta take it off okay because it's time i've worn the prosthetic leg as long as i think it was 27 hours one time mm -hmm. i put it on and just because of life things 27 hours later i sure. took it off <laughs> And that's that's actually kind of amazing for a prosthetic leg to be on that long. But then there's days when I'll only wear it six or eight hours and go, ah, I'm going to give my limb a rest. Sure. So, Brandon, would you say that that's pretty typical with other people as far as his story? Is that... You know, Randy's always on the... He's on the <laughs> yeah. down side of the bell curve. Right. That's a, a bit more... Uh, highly functional, yeah. Sure. Just I tell mean, him, Brandon. I'm your, <laughs> I'm your most particular, hardest patient. Yeah, that you'd love to see. But, but he also the most rewarding to work with sure. because you know when you get somebody that keeps pushing the envelope and pushes the limits of what we're able to right. do with the technology, it's good. You know what I tell people normally: you should expect to be able to wear your prosthesis, all things being equal, as long as you want to, from the time you get up in the morning till the time you want to take it off at night, mm. doing activities that uh, you feel are necessary to your quality of life. And that's our goal as prosthetists and care providers. And really, you know, when we work with therapists, we, we, we help train our common client here sure. how to get to that point, yep. slowly ramping mm -hmm. up. And that should be expected. If, if people aren't able to wear their limb you know, their, their whole uh, work day, there's probably a reason why. Sure. Uh, there needs to be adjustments. Yep. You need to call your prosthetist. You know, you need to talk to your therapist. Yep. You need to keep asking for help and don't give up and don't just say, well, this is as good as it gets because I don't really take no for an answer a lot. You sure. Know? <laughs> That's <laughs> we, why we get along. That's why we get along. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we've covered this. Yeah. How to dine it off. We have some other videos that we're going to do. Uh, with uh, with Randy, so we don't want to wear you out yet. <laughs> oh, you can't wear me out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we appreciate you watching, and uh, I hope we uh, answered some questions for you. Thank you. Thanks.